Hi guys, welcome to the video. I just want to take a few seconds to explain Hantech Minis. It's an idea that I came up with to take our masterclass videos, which are usually over an hour long, and carve out about a five or 10 minute section that covers one single topic. And that way you've got a, a list of videos that you can go to and you can find the exact topic that you're trying to learn about, one feature from Thinkorswim or some other trading platform that you're trying to learn, and get right in, find out exactly how to use that part of the tool, and then get right back to your workflow, okay? And so I just wanted to take a few more seconds here to show you how to access the playlist on the YouTube channel and also from our website where those videos are hosted. Okay, so the first thing I want you to do is go to uh, youtube.com forward slash at Hontech, all one word, and that will get you to our YouTube channel. Next, let me show you how to access the playlist. So you click right here under playlists and you see all of our created playlists down here and you see this one right down here, Hontech Minis Thinkorswim Scans. Okay, so you go ahead and open that up and then you will immediately begin to see uh, the videos there listed and, and pick whichever one that you want to watch okay and then uh, get right on back to your workflow now let me show you how to access this from our website okay so we go to our website this is hondashtech.com and you go to free tutorials okay and then you go to thinkorswim tutorials okay and then you go down here toss is short for thinkorswim so you go to toss minis so you open that up and then you can see here all of the videos are hosted right here. And all you have to do is select one from the list here, or you can select from the menu over here. So our website is designed so that all of our videos are loaded by topic, and you can easily navigate your way through and view all of our videos. It's a lot easier than using YouTube because YouTube will want to try to sidetrack you into watching some other video. So if you wanted to watch one in particular, like for instance, Dynamic Alerts mini tutorial, then you've got access to it right there. Okay, we're gonna dive right in and get started. And let's go ahead and clear out these stock filters that come in by default, and we'll add a study filter. Okay, so the brief overview of the study filter, notice we've got some new items. We've got some user inputs for all the built-in studies. Notice the default is ADX crossover, and you've got these built-in user inputs. That's really handy. Sure wish we could do that for custom study filters. We can't maybe someday. Notice we have some different types of controls over here too, okay? Very, very important. Study filters are the only type of filter you can add to a scan that allows you to control the time frame the scan runs in. I think it's very important that we explain exactly how much historical data is available for each of the time frames that you might select for a study filter. You can see we've got a section here from Thinkorswim talking about study filters. We scroll down to the bottom and we can see that we have data limitations. Very, very important. Pay close attention here to this part. You can see that from a one minute time frame to a 30 minute time frame, we have 15 astronomical days. That's not trading days, that's calendar days. So take four weekends out of that and you have 11, okay? So consider when you're doing a scan on a 30 minute time frame, and on a 30 minute time frame you have roughly 13 bars per day, and you have 13 times 11, so let's do the math here, it gives us 143. So you've got 143 individual 30 minute bars available to the scan. Do you think you can calculate a 200 period simple moving average from that? No, you can't, okay? So consider that, it's very, very important. Now also consider from daily to one month, from one day to one month, you've got 730 days. Now that works out to two years. And you know, trading days, we've got like 251 trading days per year. But more importantly, if you set it to a weekly time frame, how many weeks are in two years? That's 104 weeks in a two year time frame. So if you set your scan to a weekly time frame, can you calculate a 200 week moving average? No, you can't. So this is very, very, very important. I cannot emphasize this enough. I want you guys to make sure that you understand this. It will lead you to so much frustration if you don't know this. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these study filters. There's tons of built in 
You've got bearish and bullish candle patterns, and then they separate them out by bearish only and, and bullish only. So you've got all these candle patterns to pick from. You got corporate actions, okay, dividends, earnings, splits, crossovers. You can build this on your own. It's already included on Thinkorswim. But they think automatically that there's you have to write code in order to do a scan on Thinkorswim. You have to write code. No, you don't have to write code. You don't have to. You can. It's an option. But I tell you what, if you learn all of these different study filters and how to apply them, you can do almost anything that I can do with code, you can do in a scan. Now I do some advanced stuff for clients that are well beyond the capability of anything that you can pick here. Let's get into a custom study filter. This is where the rubber hits the road in my view. This is the most exciting part of Thinkorswim because why? Because I'm a software developer and I love to write code and it's my element, it's what I love to do. That's just me, you know? So let's go ahead and take a look at some examples. In order to create our own custom study filter, go ahead and click the pencil icon right here next to the time frame. So we're gonna leave it set to daily time frame. We're gonna click that little, we're gonna call it the edit button. Instead of the pencil icon, we're gonna call that the edit button. Go ahead and click that, and we open up the scanner custom filter editor right I just call it the code editor you can see right now it defaults to the condition wizard that's a subject of another video altogether if you haven't seen it already we've got two videos that cover the condition wizard one covers specifically scans and the other covers condition wizard as it pertains to custom watch list columns so go ahead and view those videos when you get a chance because using the condition wizard is fantastic you don't have to know how to write a single line of code all you have to do is be able to click a mouse it is so easy you can pick values studies functions prices you can do crossovers, you can do greater than, less than, you can do is true, is false. You can change the parameters of the studies. This is really awesome. Once you learn how to use the condition wizard and you learn how to use the scans on Thinkorswim, like I'm teaching you here in this video, you're probably not gonna need me much. The only time you're gonna need me is when you've got something that's nearly impossible to figure out and I'm gonna be banging my head against the keyboard trying to figure it out. But that's what I love to do, so. Uh, bring it. <laughs> Let's go ahead and cancel this. We're going to go to the ThinkScript editor because we said we're going to create a custom study filter. Well, what are we going to do? We're going to do a plot and you can put anything here for the variable name. Okay, we're just going to call it scan because we happen to be running a scan. So plot scan equals. All right, so that's the statement plot scan equal equals what close is greater than 10 and close is less than 20. Sound familiar? Yeah, we did this already. We did this with a stock filter. Click OK, click Scan. It runs, we get the results. Same exact results we get if we run a stock filter using the same criteria. So that's how a study filter works. Now, I want to show you briefly how you take a custom solution that I've provided in the Q&A form or in one of my videos and add that as a study filter to your scan. So let me go ahead and bring that up. So we'll go ahead and open up our website and we'll right click on the breadcrumb there for stock scanners, open a new tab and we'll go to that new tab and then we'll go ahead and sort this by most views and we'll pick the first one right off the top of the list here, uh, thinkorswim scanner for new, high, intraday. We'll go ahead and open that in new tab, go to that new tab and you can see the description here. Uh, you can look this up later and read that if you want. But the real thing here is this is the solution that I provided. And you can go ahead and copy all of that code. And then you paste it right here. Okay. You can see here when we paste this existing code that we just got from the website, I'm going to highlight all of this. Okay. And erase it. We're going to right click and select paste. I usually use the keyboard shortcuts for that, but I wanted you to see exactly how that's done. And now you can see that the condition wizard is completely grayed out there because there's no way the condition wizard understands all of the detail that's going on in this code. And so you can see here we've got two scan signals. This is one very important thing I want to cover in the videos. When I do study filters, I'm always including multiple signals at the very bottom of the code. There's two different signals here. One is for daily high greater than daily high previous. Okay, and the other one here, if you look at that, that's for daily low. So you've got two different 
directions here. And how do you change that? You put the hashtag here and you remove it from here. Now we've just changed it from daily high to daily low. Okay. And then you can go ahead and hit OK, and then you run the scan. And I'm not going to take the time to bring that up in a chart because we're trying to keep this short. The most important thing I want you to take away from what I just showed you is how do you copy and paste code, custom code for a scan into a study filter and run a scan? Okay, you can set the time frame here. As I said before, you can adjust that time frame to whatever you like. Okay, and how you access that code is you click the edit button that little pencil icon you open it up you copy and paste your code here into the code editor and then you adjust your signal accordingly now when i write code for a scan i always put all the inputs right up at the top if you wanted to adjust something like number of days you just change it right there we don't get to uh, create uh, user inputs like for instance with that adx that we saw here we don't get to do this. We don't get to add this, you know, ADX crosses above and a value and controls. We don't get to do any of that because Thinkorswim has not enabled it. Oh, another thing I want to mention here, uh, anything that you do on a scan, okay, the time zone is going to be Eastern time zone. It's fixed. It doesn't matter what you set your charts to. It doesn't matter what you change on the platform through application settings or anywhere else on the platform. A scan always runs on Eastern time zone. So if you're working with an input that has a start time and an end time, you know, for market open and market close, guess what? You need to stick to Eastern time zone. See the 1600? You gotta be very careful how the code is written because if it's not written very carefully, then this value is not going to work, right? We think the market closes at 1600 hours. It depends on what time frame you have selected for your chart. Now, one mistake that I made when I was doing this demonstration here is we clearly have an intraday code for the study alert, but I forgot to set the aggregation period to an intraday time frame. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at a chart really quick here because I want to show you something very important about how you set time because depending on how the code is written, you need to make sure you adjust that time based upon what time frame you're using. For instance, if we have an hourly time frame as we have here, and we'll uncheck that box, then we'll go ahead and go to our chart, and we'll go ahead and change that to one hour, and we'll go ahead and change these settings here to turn off extended hours trade. Uh, what, one of the things we're going to cover here while we're looking at this is the start aggregations at market open. If you have that checked, and it is checked by default on Thinkorswim, unfortunately, if you have that checked, then your most of your intraday charts will never match your intraday scans, study filters, conditional orders, or watch list columns. Basically, everything else on the platform will be out of sync from your chart if you have this box checked. I always uncheck that box, and I never use that. Hit apply and OK. OK, all I wanted to do is be able to show clearly, you know, the first bar of the day and the last bar of the day. OK, so you see this right here. Do you see that 1500 down at the very bottom of the chart? That is the opening time of each bar. So if we go back to the previous bar, that bar opened at 1400 hours. This bar opened at 1300 hours. So if you want to get the close of the last hourly bar on the chart, with the current settings the time needs to be set to 1500 not 1600 okay because all the bars on thinkorswim are stamped with the opening time not the ending time likewise if you have a start time that you need to adjust in your code then if your hourly chart and you're not including extended hours and you have the start aggregation at market open turned off then the starting time, the first bar on the chart for each day is at 900 hours, not 930. Even though the actual trading doesn't start until 930. Confusing? Yeah. So, okay, that's it for the study filter. That's about all I had to cover on that topic.